Hello everybody, this is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor at Games Radar Plus. From throbbing body parts to glowing hit zones, big ass buttons and suspicious growths, it's hard to miss what's staring you in the face. These weak spots are so plain, so clearly there, they beg to be exploited. Here is our tribute to the 12 enemies that are cocky and or reckless enough to wear their weak spots with pride. Haybot's hey big red button conquers bad fur day. Admittedly, Haybot's hey giant honking button is there precisely to mock giant honking weak spots. But like all great satire, it's effective at also actually being what it's satirizing. While that can't be said of most of Conker's Bad Fur Day, the button is worthy of a salute. Hive Minds, Squishy Things, Dead Space. Wait, so you just have to hit those six yellow squishy things? Cool. Giant Enemy Crab's Underbelly, Genji Days of the Blade. This one requires a bit of gaming history. The Giant Enemy Crab's weak spot isn't obvious because of its appearance, but rather the fact that it was broadcast live to millions of players when the game was announced. Game Republic lead producer Bill Rich shared the handy crab killing tip during Sony's E3 2006 demonstration, and mortifyingly at that. The enemy crab gained notoriety as a tongue-in-cheek mascot for weak points and historical inaccuracies. Ten years later, we still know where to hit crabs of inordinate size. Weak point for massive damage. <clears throat> Gradius is everything. Gradius. The Vic Viper's mission ain't easy, but knowing exactly where to shoot definitely gives humanity an edge. Easily identifiable weak spots are a hallmark of horizontal shooters, but Gradius is arguably the game that set the standard for all shooters that came afterward. Stop telling us to shoot the core, Gradius! We get it already! The Heads of House of the Dead House of the Dead's hand-holding was useful in an arcade setting, and maybe more recent console editions are just keeping the joke alive. Still, it's fun to imagine a Sega executive smashing his plastic gun, turning to fearful developers and shouting, Can anyone tell what I'm supposed to be aiming at? <laughs> King Hippo's Gut. Punch out. Punch-Out! pros will note that it takes a jab to the mouth to get Sir Hippo to expose his belly, after which a few jabs to his gut will open his head for a pounding. This makes Hippo's belly a crucial part of Little Mac's winning strategy, and thanks to Hippo's girth, it's nigh impossible to miss the mark. Of course, not realizing that his weak spot is there in the first place makes you feel pretty dumb later on. His belly button has a frigging X on it, man. Colossi's Sigils, Shadow of the Colossus. Yes, yes, it's tragic that you spend your time felling majestic beasts, more or less minding their own business in a forgotten mythic kingdom. But maybe they shouldn't have glowing markers where they hide all their vital black goo, huh? Just get a regular henna design at the College Art Fest, Colossi, not the glowing one on your death zone. <laughs> Final I. Section Z. Section Z's final boss proves an important point. Weak spots don't always guarantee an easy fight. It can be an advantage, sure, but not all make for easy pickings. This eye will kick your ass. Andros's Palms. Star Fox. 
Andross's weak points aren't out of place among the Despot's evil armada. All of Fox's enemies have some hit-me-right-here idiot box to make fighting them that much easier. Of course, in the event you can't suss these out for yourself, you can be sure Slippy will chirp all about it on the headset just so you're extra crystal clear. Those Hyrulean eyes, the Legend of Zelda. Eyes aren't exactly the only obvious weak points in The Legend of Zelda. Every boss has some conspicuous bump or organ or appendage, screaming to be poked with whatever item Link stumbled across ten minutes earlier. Clearly evolution in the animal kingdom of Hyrule doesn't work the same as it does on Earth, or these enemies would have died ages ago. <laughs> Womp King's Crack, Super Mario 64. To Womp King's credit, he does trade in his Band-Aid Bullseye from Super Mario 64 for a less obvious star symbol in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Then again, that's akin to replacing a bullseye with an arrow. During that comeback, he mutters, No! Crushed again! Really, Womp King? At this point, I just think you're in this for the kink. Acrid's glowing bits. Lost Planet. Come on, just look at those things. It's hard to think hyper-intelligent insect races like the Acrid are okay with prancing around topside with their vulnerable bits lit up like a damn Christmas tree. Cover those spots up, you alien bugs. I am embarrassed for you. If you dig this and want more features just like it, follow GamesRadar at youtube.com slash GamesRadar.